right, let's talk some Eagles football and some Phillies baseball with our next guest. Jason joins us at this time every Wednesday, and he's with us right now. Good morning, Jason. How are we doing, Joe? Doing good, Jason. Look, you know we're we're pumped up. Crowd's fired up. Everyone's fired up with the Phils win last night. We'll get to, to your squad in just a moment, but let's start with the Phils. I know you were there sure. for, for game one. What was that experience like for you? I know your brother was there as well. Uh, for you guys to take in just a tremendous performance in the first game from a, obviously a tremendous baseball club. Yeah, man. I mean, it, it started out pretty hot with Schwarber and uh, Harper going yard uh, right off the bat. And, um, you know, I think we were excited to go. We were talk- I mean, it was obviously after the uh, the Jets loss, it was, uh, yeah. you know, we were kind of debating whether it should, should still go. But, I mean, you know, Trav's only going to be in town, you know, this one time we get an opportunity to do something like this and decide to jump at it. And uh, certainly happy that we went, man. It was a great time. Uh, you know, Citizens Bank was losing their mind. It was, it, it was, a, it was a blast. It was, it was so much fun. Well, you guys certainly deserved it to say the least, Jason, you don't have to go into hiding with one loss. I'll certainly tell you that. Let, <laughs> let's, let's talk about that loss, Jason. So it's now been three days removed and I'm curious, yeah. you know, three days later, how do you feel about that loss? Um, I, you know, I, I still kind of feel three days later the way I felt in the moment, you know, I, you know, we killed ourselves a lot. I mean, I don't want to, the Jets are a good defensive football team. You look at everybody they've played, especially the quarterbacks, the way they've played, the Jets have, are well coached and they have good players and they can beat anybody, especially if that team turns the ball over four times, has a bunch of mistakes. Uh, you know, we, we weren't good enough to win the game that day when, you know, it's really remarkable that we were still in the game at the end. If you really look back at it, I mean, the defense played so phenomenal to keep us in the game. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, I mean, frustrating day offensively, but, you know, I, whenever you play a game like that, it's so apparent that, you know, there's so many things that we can do ourselves to correct these issues and to move forward. And, you know, it's, it's kind of felt like everything that, kind of good could go wrong yeah. went wrong it was just yeah. one of those days you know like the dallas not only we call like the perfect screen to dallas goddard and the defensive end makes a hell of a play yep and it hits him right as he's catching and then the ball just flies right over it like it was i don't know it was just one of those days and, and we didn't play well enough and um you know we're certainly looking forward to getting back to work and um and, and improving and correcting some of these issues Jason, what did the Jets do defensively that made it harder to run the ball against them? You know, I think, um, I, one, I think they're a good front. I think they're well-coached. I think that, um, you know, I don't want to get into the schematics of it too much. I think you know, they moved the front a little bit. They did some things. But, you know, nothing that we haven't seen before. Um, and I think... I, quite frankly, I think we had some runs there that we just didn't execute on. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we had we had some some outside hitting plays that, you know, you know in the run game, it's, and this is why the run game is hard. It only takes one guy. You know what I mean? And when it's it wasn't like any guy. I'm pointing out in specific, like on each play, if one player misses a block, the whole run play is is kind of shot. Mm-hmm. And um, that's the way it kind of felt. It felt like, you know, it was, it was this guy here. It was this guy not releasing to the back right here. It was this guy missing on the on the first level here. Um, it was guys maybe not hearing things. So, you know, it was a combination of a few things. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I think that, you know, we pride ourselves on being able to establish the run. And, um, you know, we certainly were looking to coming into the game – like we wanted to do that, you know, we knew they were missing their two starting corners. Um, but at the end of the day, you're always, you know, if you can establish the ground game, it doesn't matter who's out there. It's going to make the day so much easier. So, yeah. Um, just weren't able to get that done. I know that I, I consider myself like a mini offensive lineman, Jason, as a fullback, like a petite O lineman. Uh, and I know with it, we yeah. would have some games as an O-line where we were frustrated with Andy Reid's play calling. Uh, how often do the O-linemen grumble to you when we get pass heavy? Um, I think, you know, I think that happens at times. 
I'm, I'm not going to – it didn't happen this past week. And I think, you know, I, I went up right after the game. And, you know, I think the coaches really, you know, we probably should have ran the ball a little bit more and stuff like that. And, you know, as, as a player, though, you know, it's hard to ask to run the ball more when it's not working. Like, the pass game was actually pretty – it was it was doing pretty well. I mean, I know second half we started giving up some pressure on Jalen and started making it more difficult. But you know, Jalen and the receivers, those guys were, were were having a decent game outside of the turnovers. We were moving the ball through the air. Um, it's hard to ask for the run game when you know you're averaging 1.6 yards a carry. I think um, you know when when it's worked and, and they're not calling it, then it's frustrating. Mm-hmm. But hey, like the evidence is there. Let's do this more. Um, but I think in a game like that, it's like, you know, you, you, you can't get, you know, you, you can't get frustrated when something isn't getting called that's not working. So I think right. um, it, it felt in the moment like it was appropriate. Jason Kelsey with us here. Jason, let's let's get to in the aftermath of the loss. I'm curious. Jalen Hurts hasn't had many losses uh, in a long time. He really hasn't. How does he – handle a loss from what you can tell what what is especially a game like this where obviously the fourth quarter you know was in part on him and not exclusively on him but he did not have a great fourth quarter how does he handle it yeah I mean you know Jalen's pretty even but he he hates losing I'm not gonna lie um it's very apparent it affects uh it affects him for sure um but you know he, you know, the same guy you see in the press conferences. Like this guy is, you know, he's not he's not a machine. But you know, every every single day he's just trying to keep moving forward and keep getting better. And you know, he's he's at all times confident. And um, it was a really frustrating game. I don't know that it's fair to say that you know Jalen played poorly. I think obviously everybody could have done better, but we we did not help him out. And um, you know, he did great in the first half. Uh, and I think the second half there were some, you know, circumstances that I think made it more difficult. And I think, um, you know, I think he's he's been continually uh, improving throughout the season. And I think that we all are, are very aware that, you know, we you know we can we can still uh, you know be the team that you know we want to be. And um, you know, I think it's just some you know it's. Whenever you lose, you're pissed off. Yeah, yep. Jason, you know, I was curious. After the game, with Nick not addressing the squad in the locker room, um, I was actually fascinated mm-hmm. by it in a, in a pretty positive way. But there were a lot of people that were critical of it, thought that Nick abdicated, abdicated responsibility. Um, I certainly did not see it that way. Can, can you describe yeah. from your vantage point as a, as a player team leader your sense of how Nick handled that and how he – allowed you guys to handle it. It strikes me like it was about empowering the players to look each other in the eye and say, here's what we got to do better, and let's just get to it ourselves, knowing that, look, you're going to hear from Nick on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and blah, blah, blah. But from your perspective, what what did that moment signify for you? Well, you know, that wasn't a planned moment by Nick. You know, like Nick came in there fully anticipating to address the team, and a number of guys were, you know, uh, venting and voicing, you know, accountability and, and, you know, this isn't acceptable. And, you know, we hold ourselves to a higher standard of this. We got to improve all of that stuff. Right. And, um, it, it carried on enough and enough guys talked that it really didn't. I mean, personally, I didn't think it made sense for Nick to say anything. And I think Nick felt the same way. He's like, all right, well, you guys just said everything I was going to say. So I guess that's pretty much it. Um, you know, I don't think it was something that was like, hey, I want the players to take ownership or I don't like everything. had kind of already been aired at that point. And mm-hmm. I think I don't think it really was necessary that he had to say anything. And I think mm-hmm. that's why he probably just was like, all right, well, you know, you guys kind of just said everything and. We'll see you on Monday. You know, Jason, I'll, I'll tell you what it reminded me of. So when Coach K took over, you know, a, a version of the dream team, I hate calling them all dream teams, but the 08 squad, when Coach yeah. K had LeBron and Kobe and, and that whole crew from about 15 years ago, um, I remember there was a famous story where for the first team meeting, 
he he went around the room to everyone and said, "All right, what do you what do you guys think? What, what do we need to do to win it all? Like what, to win this goal, what do we got to do?" One guy's like, "You know, we got to be on time." Next guy's like, "You know, we got to be attention to detail. We got to do this. We got to be in." And he literally let the whole team set all what the so he didn't have to say to Kobe Bryant and LeBron James, "Here's what you got to do." He made them say it themselves. It yeah. empowered them, but it set a tempo like they're holding each other accountable because they literally said from the first meeting, this is what we got to be. That's the impression yeah. it struck me, even if it was inadvertent, like you guys led it from the beginning. Nick, you know that anyway, it just struck me as as similar in nature from a leadership standpoint. All right, John, I know you got more here. Go ahead. Jason, uh, you, this team is full of leaders. It sounds uh, sounds like we've added another one. How do you feel about adding a superstar like Julio Jones to the roster, and how surprised were you by that news? Yeah, I mean, I was obviously surprised, but um, you know, you're always surprised in like a midseason acquisition, especially when it's something of this caliber. Um, but I think, you know, you're always excited to add good players, and you're always excited to add especially as a veteran guy, guys that have been around and played a lot of football. And, you know, Julio is, he's, he's been around for a long time. He's, he's, he's been one of the best receivers in the NFL for an extended period. Um, you know, obviously on the back half, at the back end of his career, but, you know, I think everybody's excited to play football with Julio Jones. And, you know, it's, it's going to be fun having him in the building, you know, who, I don't know what the plan is as far as utilizing him as a player at this point. Um, haven't even had a meeting about that yet, but mm-hmm. I think uh, just on like the basic, you know, like, um, you know, as a teammate, you're excited when you sign well-known great players to your team because uh, you know that they're going to bring value in a number of different ways and they're going to have points of view and frames of reference that are going to improve the ball team uh, and, and the offense as a whole. So, uh, really excited to get to home, and uh, yeah, you know, awesome. Jason. Uh, I know you're going to be teammates now, and maybe you get a chance to rib them a little bit. If you get a chance to say the two words "thank you" to Julio <laughs> Jones on behalf of millions of Philadelphia sports fans for him not catching that ball at the end of the 2017 <laughs> divisional <laughs> round. There, there was an opening. You know, Jason. You know what the irony is? Had he caught it. His his feet actually came down out of bounds, so it probably would not have counted unless he had contorted his body a different way. That's the one thing about that yeah. play people either don't know about or forget. His feet actually landed out of bounds. Yeah, I think, you know, it's it would have been a miraculous play all around if that did happen. So I, I, I don't and um But he did I make really but he like, did make the miraculous back then. I mean he he did make yeah, no, those I mean, kind of catches. It, it it is, but you know, I think um you know, I think uh, Jalen Mills is, is much maligned here in Philadelphia in some regards, but everybody also loves him. He was one of these guys that was just, like, cocky and he played with this attitude and confidence. And that's the one thing with, like, DB, that you, <laughs> dude, these guys will get burnt for an enormous play. Yeah. And how you respond to that is so important. And um, that's one of the things I always loved about Mills and him being out there. It's just he had this attitude and this – uh, you know, it did a, he, he could get beat, and in his head, he was still the best cornerback in the NFL. I'm like, man, I don't know how you got this much confidence, but I, I love it, brother. It's freaking great. And, um, you know, he he made it difficult for him on that play. And in, in the moment, you know, when, when when you're in somebody's face and you're making it hard and you're physical and, um, you know, sometimes the ball falls your way. And I think um, – I, I prefer to give credit to Jalen Mills more than trying to see <laughs> uh, Julio. So. Hey, Jason, good luck on, on Sunday night versus – I bought last thing here, to wear those Kelly greens. What's that going to be like for you? I mean, you know you know the history of the Eagles. You've been around it enough to feel it. You saw when Brent Selleck at the celebration, the parade, wore the Harold Carmichael, you know, Kelly green. What is it going to be like for you to suit up in a game – wearing the Kelly green, knowing all that that represents. Yeah. I mean, I mean I'm excited. I've never been able to wear it. I, I missed out on it by one year and uh, finally we're getting it back. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's an iconic Jersey that represents a lot of history in this city and this organization. And uh, it's going to be an honor and a joy to, to finally be able to uh, wear that Jersey 
uh, this Sunday. Jason, good luck in the game. Enjoy this Phil's thing also. I know you're you're absorbing a lot of that as well. Man. Thanks for being part of the show. Listener. It was, man. All right. <laughs> Thanks, See you, Jason. Jason. Take care, man. There he is. Uh, Eagle Star Center, Jason Kelsey. Today's show, John.